Welcome to the Utah Assistive Technology Program's latest informative video, Assistive Technology for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. This production was made possible by the Utah Assistive Technology Program, located in the Center for Persons with Disabilities at Utah State University. Many thanks to Mitch Moyers of Utah's Services for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. Hello everyone, my name is Mitch Moyers. I'm here to share some information with you regarding assistive technology devices for people who are deaf and hard of hearing. And my main goal today is to not only go over what technology is in use this, at this time, but what technology is, can be used with the most recent technology that's available. Um, there's a lot to cover and I'll try to get through it best I can. I don't want to overburden you with too many deep details, but give you a broad overview of what's available and what could help you and people who are deaf and hard of hearing. So the main goal today, as we mentioned, is to emphasize the importance of assistive technology for people who are deaf and hard of hearing. It's actually a big part of their life. It's uh, something that they rely on heavily for many different reasons, for communication, for being alert of what's happening in their environment, for emergency, or for just simple alertness for what's happening and how they can be a part of it. And of course, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of new emerging technology happening this day and a lot of new things that can be used as a, a device for assistive technology. And we will cover all of this. First of all, I just want to briefly go over some terms that you probably hear a lot, ALS, ALD, or HAT. Each of them have a different meaning, but basically, one will talk about the actual device itself, and the other will talk about the whole system of itself and, um, when it comes to listening. And then there's also hearing assisted technology, which is more of a visual uh, type of technology for people to be alert of what sounds are taking place. So overall, it can be anything that refers to someone who wants to know when there's audio present. So before I get into the new technology, let's talk about what is available, available now. Uh, some of the common things that we'll see are like pocket talkers, uh, doorbell signal, or knock signals, signals, shake or flash alarms. We have amplified ringers, amplified phones, uh, extension speakers and that allow for an extension of sound or alert, or a text display phone. Uh, allow visual input or output, and also hearing assistive signal dogs. So we'll share, we're going to cover all of that real briefly. I don't want to spend too much time on that because we want to get to the, the new type of technology that can be used. But to talk about the new technology, this is all important information because this is what basically used for many years and it's been tried and true and very reliable for many people. So, some of the uh, devices that we've seen all the time are pocket talkers, and these are uh, little microphones that work basically where a person can use something similar to what I'm wearing right now. They, they could have a microphone that's implanted into the device. Uh, that microphone can be attached to another person, and it's very helpful, helpful in situations where, like riding in a car, uh, you have two people who have a hard time understanding each other because they're competing noises with traffic or sometimes radio or other chatter in the car. So this is nice to have to ha allow more one-on-one -on -one communication where the person who's using the device can get more of a direct audio sound of what the other person is saying. And it can also be used in large gatherings. Uh, it can be used to be directed towards a certain sound source like, for example, uh, a large presentation with a speaker up on stage. You can have one of these devices up there near the speaker, and that person can hear what that person is saying. And quite honestly, the uh, pocket talkers are cheaper than a hearing aid. Some people who are not quite ready for a hearing aid, but they are struggling to hear, may find this more beneficial for them. Or some who do wear a hearing aid, but and of course, hearing aids are not a perfect, a perfect fix, but something like this will make it a little easier to utilize the hearing aid abilities. Some other things to talk about are the doorbell signals. 
Uh, basically what these doorbell signals would do would create a visual or a tactile signal in place of the sound. Uh, this will allow a person with no ability to hear sounds to see or feel when there's somebody at the door. And oftentimes it'll have a, uh, when it comes to vibration, it'll have a certain pattern that it follows so you know there's someone at the door. And same with the telephone, the, each sound source has its own pattern and that can be learned over time. And you can also use these devices to extend the alert. So it doesn't have to be in one room or on one person. You can have it in several rooms in several locations. So, and it kind of reduces the stress of being able to be alert for somebody coming out your door, especially if you're ex expecting someone. Uh, some other devices are shake or flash alarms. I mentioned briefly before, it's just a visual or a tactile fe uh, feel. So you know that there's a sound taking place. But these would also work with alarm clocks, emergency alarms, um, sounds that have continuous noise, like a washing machine that's stuck and needs the adjustment, or a baby that's hungry, um, young parents who are deaf or hard of hearing cannot hear during the night, will use these devices and they will shake the bed or flash a light to alert the parent that the baby is crying for attention. And of course, they mentioned attention, attention alerts. So. Uh, like, for example, a large gym may have several lights are located around and a person can press the button and these lights will flash. Some locations will have certain colored light for getting attention for large rooms and settings. So. Amplified ringers. These are other devices that work um, when it comes to alerts, when a phone rings, someone can't hear the actual phone itself, may have a soft ringer or the type of tone or amplification that doesn't fit their type of hearing loss. Uh, some individuals may have the ability to hear high tones better than others and others with low tones. So these ringers will oftentimes have this ability to adjust to according to the person's type of hearing loss. And in the picture I included a large bell just to kind of emphasize the point of how loud these ringers can become. And uh, these are very beneficial from like large rooms or maybe a warehouse setting. And sometimes they do put them in these locations to allow a noisy environment to be alerted that there's somebody at the door or a phone ringing and these devices can work. And of course, there's the other the little devices that you see on the screen here with little speakers that can be placed out in different locations of a building or in a room. And it kind of extends the signal beyond. Um, you no, know, speaking from personal experience, unless I'm in the underneath the doorbell, I won't hear it. I do wear hearing aids, and it does amplify sound, but it doesn't amplify all of the sound throughout the house. So I would have to have something similar to this in another room where the sound could be traveled, uh, can transfer up there, and I could hear when somebody's out the door. Amplified phones are another type of device that's available. Uh, basically, when you take a standard telephone and you have the volume, the uh, volume of the headset is set to a standard volume for many people, but for someone with a hearing loss, um, some prefer to use the telephone without their hearing aids and may use the amplified phone to crank up beyond the standard volume control, and it's, it makes it easier to hear and understand. Even with hearing aids, sometimes you need that little extra boost of volume to be able to understand and if you notice uh, in the pictures here, we have the, the headset with the red around the, the headset, the, um, the earpiece that will flat, uh, flash red if once the volume had gone beyond the standard. Uh, that's often a good thing to have for a mixed household with people with hearing loss or no hearing loss. So if a person with hearing loss were to pick up a phone and see that red light on, they can be alerted that the volume is going to be much louder than usual. So you don't want to damage hearing. Or, or be louder than something they're expecting. And they, they come in different types of forms and formats. You have some with big buttons on it. Uh, this is very beneficial for people who are elderly, older, have a hard time with vision. Uh, they can be allowed to have that extra volume, but also see the numbers and make it easier to type when they're making a phone call. And you have uh, many types to work with. And you'll notice all of them have that little red signal light on it. The same thing with the volume being increased beyond the standard. 
that light will flash and you'll know that there's it's a louder volume than necessary. And I talked extension speakers, and these are just a couple of that you can see. Uh, they have a lot more, and these basically just be, tch, carry the sound that coming from the primary location, whether it be a phone ringing or doorbell or an alarm or an emergency alert or any type of continuous noise. Uh, the sound will travel to different speakers throughout the building, and uh, make it. And it, it can also be adjusted to the type of tone and the type of hearing loss that the person may have, and it'll fit their needs. And the one you see at the bottom with the numbers on it, uh, that can actually spell out what sound event is taking place. Uh, you know, it's called a home aware system by Sonic Alert. And so if somebody rings the doorbell, it'll flash. It'll flash with not only the light and, and transfer the sound, but it'll also say on the screen itself, door. Or if the phone's ringing, same idea. Light flash, carry the sound, and phone. So these are pretty nice devices to have around, and they're helpful. We also have text display phones. These are phones that work like a closed captioning that you would see on the TV sets. Basically, you would have a few different types. Uh, we have one that's called a CapTel, and we have another one called a Caption Call. Uh, these are the two main ones out on the market now. Uh, there are a few others, but if you were to, oops, sorry, if you were to look for something either through a public service, uh, like the Public Service Commission, or they have the Utah Relay Program, and they're giving out a uh, caption phone for people with a fixed budget or on certain federal assistance, they can receive these devices for little to no cost. And basically how this works is just, you have the same type of phone that we talked about with amplification and uh, a visual alert, but it also have when the other person is talking on the other end, everything that they say will come out on, in words on the screen so they could read everything that's being spoken. The one below is Caption Call. This is done by another company that's not a par part of the Public Service Commission, but they do have a program that can apply for it to get either for little or no cost as well. And they're through a company called Caption Call, as I mentioned before. So both of these work with different types of technology. Um, mo mainly, uh, you would have to have a broadband, broadband system in place to allow the text to come through and to communicate back and forth. And you also have to have a phone line in, a, in conjunction with it. So. Also want to talk about relay services. Uh, we have many types of relay services available, and I just kind of listed a few so you can kind of get an idea of what is available and how they work. Uh, we have video relay service, we have caption telephone, and I mentioned it earlier, they do work with an operator in place to allow clear communication on both ends. We also have voice carryover, hearing carryover, and video remote interpreting. To tell you a little bit about voice carryover, these are, this is the service that is available for people with uh, speech impediments or speech disabilities. And so they have a trained operator that can listen to, uh, excuse me, they can listen to the speaker and to relay what is being spoken. Uh, they may have the inability to form words clearly and, and distinctly, so the operator would listen. They've been trained for this type of thing. They would listen and relay that message to the person on the other end, so we can relay back and forth what is being spoken. And this is the very nice service that we have here in Utah and many places across the nation. Uh, it's, uh, it's available for those who are not comfortable using their own voice on the telephone, and so they could use this service to have a co phone conversation. Video remote interpreting. Uh, this one is a little bit different than the v video relay service that I mentioned before. For the video relay service, you have the operator that's working in between on both ends of the telephone for the, the speaker and for the signer. But the video remote interpreting, there's no phones involved. Uh, this is more of a room um, that's using current video conferencing equipment. So for example, if I'm 
in San Francisco and I'm meeting with my boss and I'm deaf. I use ASL and I can't communicate with my boss directly because I don't hear and speak. And so the company can contact the video remote interpreting and this can be based anywhere in the nation. They could be based in San Francisco or they can be based in Florida. So basically they would connect through a t video conferencing system and the interpreter would hear through the sound system what the person is speaking and then sign and relay what is being spoken to the deaf individual who uses American Sign Language. And then it, the trend is reversed, it goes back and forth. So it's a very nice system to have and it's kind of a um, on-demand type of service that's very helpful for people who rely mostly on ASL for communication. We also have TTY Relay. I put that down last. Um, it is a service that's still in place. Basically, you have a, the old TTY teleprompters. You, many of you have probably seen those before. It's basically a little screen with a keyboard on it. You would type everything that needs to be said, and if a person has a TTY on the other end, they can read what is being typed and then respond back and forth. However, if you're calling someone who does not use a TTY but uses the phone with the audio and speech, and then the TTY would contact the relay service. Here in Utah, it's 711. Uh, in fact, I think it's the nationwide number, 711. So if you're using a TTY, you, can, you dial 711, connect to an operator, dial in the number that they're trying to call, then the operator would communicate with the caller through the TTY directly, and then on the other end, they would commu communicate with the the recipient of the call with voice and then type out everything that the voice is, is, is speaking on the phone. So it's a uh, service that's still available today. It's uh, actually something that's kind of shrinking over the last few years, especially with the rise of the video relay service. However, it is not uh, done away with completely. Uh, a lot of people who are deaf and blind and rely on braille type of teleprompters or TTY, they can uh, type out what, need, what needs to be said and then when the communication comes through, it comes out on their Braille machine, they can read it in Braille. So, and that's the very common, they're pretty much the common users of TTY Relay at this time. So. <clears throat> I'd mentioned briefly about video relay service before. But to emphasize, the uh, deaf caller is able to use, hear their own natural lang language and sign to communicate with the person who is hearing. And uh, the video relay interpreter is trained in ASL and certified and able to translate into spoken English or any other spoken language and then receive the spoken language and translate it into ASL. Um, as I mentioned before, video relay service is kind of overcome the whole TTY relay service basically because it is a lot faster, a lot more fluent, and especially with com when it comes to TTY, if the ASL native user is not familiar with English, they would feel more comfortable using their own language and have it translated rather than try to t translate it themselves into English. Um, Basically, the syntax and grammar are completely different in the, between the two different languages, ASL and English. So having this type of service is really beneficial for people who are ASL users. So. But the same concept of using the interpreter and having someone in between carrying, relaying the information back and forth is also used with the CapTel and Caption telephones. Uh, basically, all of the word that's being spoken by the, the one caller goes into a voice recognition technology and of course the technology is not perfect but however the operator is there to make any correction that's necessary and at the same time the person who's on the other end can hear what is being spoken and as well as read uh, what is spoken as well so that's a very nice service to have and it's very helpful then of course i put in the hearing dogs um, they they're not electronic technology. It's not uh, something that's created in a lab. But uh, you can use a lab to be your uh, assistive technology. And it, basically, it works the concept of if there's somebody at the door, if there's somebody yelling, if there's an alarm, or any type of sound that's happening, the dog will run 
to the sound source and back to the owner through a deaf or hard of hearing and back and forth until the, the owner or the master knows that, oh, the dog is trying to tell me that this is happening. And, and this is really something that's still used today. It's a very beneficial tool. Not only does it help alert what is happening, but it allowed the owner to have someone to associate with. It was just, it's really a great service they have, it, they have here in, uh, in the United States for many people across the nation who are looking for this type of help. So. And I talked about the TTY before. Um, I'm just going to cover it briefly, just because, I, as I mentioned before, the TTY is still in use today. It's not quite commonly used. To give you an idea, I was working at a public library uh, about a year ago, and they were asking me how to use the TTY. And during the time, I, uh, I asked them, you know, how often have you guys used your TTY? And they said the last call we had was three years ago. So, and it, before that relay service came to, into existence, TTY was used quite commonly, but once video relay came into place, the TTY went away. However, it still happens. Uh, like I mentioned, the deaf-blind, they use it quite often. So what are some of the ways to recognize the in incoming TTY call? Chances are that you won't receive one just because there's the, the uh, pool of people who use the TTY is not as wide as it used to be. But if you were, it was down pretty close to what an incoming fax was down like. Uh, and some of the newer TTYs would have a computerized voice telling you that it's a deaf, uh, deaf caller. So if you establish a call, a lot of times you would just switch it on because it connected directly into the phone line, or you would put the headset on top of the TTY itself. And one thing to note that when you're using a TTY and you're typing, um, it, there is a delay from the typing and how the words go across. So they have the code that they've created called go ahead or SK just to let the know, person on the other end know that, oh, okay, he's done talking, it's my turn. So you have that code of relaying back and forth. So, um, it's kind of funny for me to talk about it now because it's, it is something that I use quite often because I, am, I do have a hearing loss myself and using TTY was a lot easier than using a telephone. And so all of this was very familiar to me and I haven't used it in years. So to talk about it, it kind of bringing back memories of what technology, technology used to be. Uh, we have TTYs, but now we have smartphones. Smartphones are absolutely fantastic. And that's what I want to get to next, because with smartphones, everything that I just talked about before, you can pretty much do the exact same thing on a smartphone. So let's go ahead and dive into that, because this is where it gets exciting, at least for me, and I hopefully it's exciting for you because we can be very creative in how we want to use these, this new technology we have these days. So. For example, I want to talk a little bit about home automation. We need smartphone because a lot of times your smartphone is the, your control panel of how all of these devices would work. And then to point out on this, this screen here, if you notice we have a motion sensor, you have door control, you have security and alarm, you have light control, and then of course a remote control here. All of these are very important and they can all be used for, per, uh, for the benefit of somebody who has a hearing loss. For example, a motion sensor can allow someone to know when there's something taking place in the room, that, a certain room of the house. Because uh, they, they don't have the benefit of being able to hear, you know, people talking or things, people walking or knowing someone coming in through the door, for example. Or if someone coming in when they're not supposed to, security and alarm, or light will flash. You can actually program these devices to work with uh, the doorbell and to have it flash the light when someone rings the doorbell or if someone's calling you. You can also use the remote control to to stop these devices from working or to, you can actually see on your phone what is happening in the different environments. So these are some of the ways that home automation can be very helpful with people with hearing loss. They can use this, these services that are available for their needs. So some of the tools that you may see with home automation, one of the most famous ones here, you probably see quite often, is the ring, the telephone, uh, excuse me, the doorbell. Um, I know for myself, I do have a ring, and I do have a spouse that is deaf, 
and to when somebody come to the door, we used to have the lights flashing, but when you have young children and ch children in the neighborhood, the doorbell becomes a temptation to come see, oh, this person's house flashes when you press the doorbell. So the ring is really nice because when the person rings the doorbell, my phone will vibrate and I can actually see who's out, see who's out the door. And it's also a nice benefit because when a solicitor comes to my door, especially if I'm not comfortable using my voice, and if, or a, a person who is deaf and not comfortable is using their voice and prefers ASL, they may be able to look at that and say, oh, it's a solicitor, I don't want to answer the door. Or, you know, use the other types of, have other types of methods of, of avoiding any type of communication mishaps. So. And so you also have the uh, other cameras around, just basically to kind of give you an idea of what's taking place in different parts of the house, uh, to know when there's motion, or to know when there's, um, if there's a sound taking place and you're trying to find out the location of it instead of having to run from room to room to find that sound location, you can use the cameras for their benefits. And oftentimes cameras have a microphone built in so it will alert you of what camera is being activated with the sound so they can actually be drawn to what's happening. And that's really nice, especially if, like if the microwave, I mean, excuse me, the washing machine gets stuck and starts to buzz. You don't want that thing buzzing all day long. So if I'm getting these alerts, you can go ahead and uh, draw attention to that and take care of it. Or if I have a young child, uh, as a deaf parent, a young child that decides to wander outside of the house, uh, the camera can actually capture the child and I can see and follow where they went and catch up with them and bring them back. So it has a lot of benefits, not only for just the public at large, but for people who have a hearing loss. It's a very nice tool to have. And a few other things that we mentioned before, the light systems. Again, these can be programmed to allow uh, the user to know when there's a, uh, a phone call coming in, or when there's somebody at the door, or if to if they can't see something on the camera, they can actually turn the lights on to make it brighter. Uh, and you'll notice that some, like this one right here, you have a uh, color, and the colors can be working with different programs. So if someone rings the doorbell, the red light may flash. If the phone is ringing, the blue light may flash. Or if there's a loud noise in the room, the yellow light may flash. And so it's, Something that's available for any kind of creative use for a person with a hearing loss. They can set their home to let them know when certain things are taking place. They can have a flash or a phone alert and a vibration in, in, their, uh, in their pouch or pocket. So they know, oh, this, I need to have, draw attention to this. And of course, smartphones have the ability to adjust notification so you're not getting buzzing all the time. Like if you're getting a text a thousand times, you don't want to text a buzz, 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 then oh, ignore it, and there's somebody at the door. So all of this can be adjusted. It just takes time and patience to learn what works best for that person. Now I also want to talk about Bluetooth. Um, <clears throat> Bluetooth, wonderful, de uh, wonderful device that uh, available, a wonderful type of feature for smartphones. Um, I'm pointing to this thing here because this is actually a Bluetooth streamer and it works in conjunction with my hearing aids. So I do oh, wear two hearing aids and it's really nice to have because when a phone call comes in, my hearing aid will actually make a ringing noise so I know there's somebody calling me. Or if I wanted to watch a movie, I can actually hear the sound directly into my hearing aid. The, the music or the, the, mu uh, the talking of the movie script, or books on tape. Uh, any type of thing that's available, and that's really nice. But another thing uh, that can be used for is when uh, it comes to communication. Basically, it's a lot easier to hear people on the headphones than it is to hear directly from a speakerphone or right next to the ears. For some people with a hearing loss, headphones are easier to use than the phone's actual speaker. Uh, so they may use one of these devices based on their type of hearing loss for that kind of reason. And if you look here, kind of shows you the creativity of how Bluetooth can be used. It's actually a beanie head cap with the Bluetooth built in it. 
Uh, there are many different types of devices out there, and I didn't have enough space on this screen to fit them all in there, but I wanted to give you an idea of what's out there. So with a little exploration, you can find something that works best for you and use it to your advantage. So what are some of the benefits of Bluetooth using? What did we talk about before? Pocket talkers, doorbells, ringers, phones, extension speakers, or even hearing dogs because the phone can tell you where, where the sound source is coming from. It doesn't go back and forth, but it can actually show you on the screen. So all of these are the same type of technology that you could use in just one simple device on your smartphone. So how would you activate something like a, a pocket talker on your phone? So let me give you one example. I'm going to go to my phone, unlock the screen here. And this is an iPhone, so Android has their own type of setup. So what I'm showing you here may be a little bit different if you're an Android user, but the concept is almost the same. So follow along here and you can kind of get an idea of what to look for on your Android system. With the iPhone, you would collect the settings app and then you would going to go down to where the accessibility is and, and under the iPhone you would find it under general and then accessibility then you scroll down to hearing and then you'll see different types of settings that are available on their iPhone. You have MiFi hearing devices. Let's tap on that. A lot of the new hearing aids that are becoming available these days, they use this technology that directly program to work with the iPhones. Uh, my hearing aids currently don't do this, uh, but I am showing it to you. So if you are the type of person who bought hearing aids with MiFi technology built into it for iPhone, you would go to this setting and it would automatically connect to your hearing aid. Just like uh, if it's using an Apple Watch or something, the iPhone is programmed to search and connect to an Apple Watch and you can program it from that point on. So this is really nice to have because uh, they give you the same type of service that I mentioned before, being able to hear a phone call, music, movies, uh, books on tape, or any type of audio that's taking place. Even if you're using the home camera and home automation, if that camera had the speaker built into it, you can actually connect and hear the sound directly through the person's hearing aids. Very nice to have, uh, even if you're a ring user. And of course, all this depends on the person's type of hearing loss and their ability for speech discrimination. Um, but if they do have it available, they can utilize it to better their ability. Okay, going back to the phone. You'll also see on there, RTT slash TTY. Your iPhone, and I believe the Android have just developed one on their own phone too. This is actually a native app or a native software that's built in on the phone. So all you'd have to do would activate it. In this case, it would be software TTY. And so, Automatically, anytime a call comes in or goes, goes out, you would connect as a TTY. So you would not use the phone anymore, you would actually be using the TTY and it would call relay, automatically call the relay service for you. Or if you were to contact another TTY user, it would identify that person's connection and you would have a connection back and forth, a TTY. Me personally, I wouldn't use it, especially with the availability of texting and many other types of chatting apps that are out there available. But however, if the need arises, it's there, it's available. Okay, going back, you'll also see LED flash for alerts, and that kind of says it all. Basically, it utilizes the flash on your iPhone or your Android phone. So when a message comes in or an alert comes in, the phone will flash. Um, basically, it's letting you know the sound is taking place. Another one, we have Mono Audio. Mono Audio is for 
There are some types of hearing loss where a stereo use of audio is a little harder to understand because stereo incorporates a lot of sound in a kind of an environmental type of setting. Mono is more of a directly uh, one tone, one sound, and, and that's oftentimes a little easier, depending on the person's type of hearing loss, easier to understand on a telephone. And then some of the others, you have phone noise cancellation. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, that's basically, it kind of cuts out the feedback on your phone if you're on a phone call. Um, if whatever is being picked up on your phone, microphone, or may sometimes echo in the speaker, this is just a little feature to help cut that out, make it easier to hear just the talker on the other end of the phone instead of hearing the environment around you as well. And scroll down a little further, you also notice it has subtitles and captioning. I just wanted to point that out, how important that is, especially for me as a, uh, a person with a hearing loss. I want to be able to use the caption to the best of my ability. Uh, we just need to get more videos online to allow this type of feature to work. So hopefully if you have any type of connection to alert those media outlet to caption everything they put on, on their iPhones or even online on, on the internet, uh, on their websites, uh, we want to have those captions available for everyone. Okay, let's go back to the presentation here. And I will want to share with you one feature on the iPhone that I just covered really quickly here. But if you're, looking, if you're looking to use an assistive listening device, your smartphone can actually become a pocket talker or an assistive listening device. The, uh, the, camera, the microphone in the phone, in the speakerphone, it works really well for capturing voices in a room. It has the ability to kind of zoom in on different speakers in the room. Of course, when you have competing speakers, that gets a little more complicated. But kind of give you an example, if you're sitting at a table, and you may have 10, 10 people around that table, and each person is taking time talking. So if I'm sitting here on this end, and on the person on the other end of the table, my hearing aids are having to pick up not only what they're saying, but every sound in between their mouth to me. So, if someone's coughing, or if there's air conditioner running, or if there's machinery running in the background, I'm going to pick up all of that, plus the person's voice. So that oftentimes becomes a competition and makes it very hard to understand. Well, with this, as I mentioned before, the noise cancellation and all that, you can actually use the iPhone to be that, uh, use that speaker, which it works really well in being able to capture that person's voice and amplify just the voice rather than all the other sounds. My hearing aid don't quite work that well for some reason, uh, but the iPhone does. So if I were to work with them together, it does great. So going back to the phone, how would you find that? So basically from the home screen, you'd go to your settings, and you look on here in the, on, the, uh, on the slideshow presentation, it shows control center. Going to the iPhone, tap on Control Center. Then you want to customize controls. Then you want to scroll down. And it, as you see, I already have it activated. Or I have it. So if I were to open up the control panel, you would see it right here on the bottom. It has a little logo of the ear. So let's remove that so I can show you how it is added. So going down to my more controls, look for hearing, tap on the plus sign, then it will add it to your control panel. So if you wanted to, you could back to that large table setting with 10 speakers, 10 uh, people meeting around it. I can turn on my phone, tap on that hearing button, what it would do, it would activate my Bluetooth device. In this case, for me, it would be this device right here. It would turn it on and then start sending a signal to my hearing aid. So everything that's being spoken in the room is being picked up by my phone speaker and being fed directly into my streamer, which goes into my hearing aids. Now, those other, other uh, connections that I showed with you, the MiFi hearing aid, they would work 
the, almost the same way, except you wouldn't have the streamer like I do. It'd be feeding directly into the hearing aids. And this is a really nice feature. Um, it's not something that I would call a perfect accommodation, but it is something that is a very useful accommodation if needed. Um, so if you go into a setting and they forget to provide assistive technology for you or a person with hearing loss, you could use this as a backup. Uh, you would basically be in control of what, uh, how you want to be able to hear what's being said. So very nice to have, very nice to see. So Android has something similar to that. Uh, you just have to look for it under your settings and in, in accessibility features. <clears throat> and really quickly, I'm going to go back up a little bit, back to the Bluetooth devices. All of these right here would work with that hearing, with that hearing app that I mentioned. Let's jump back here. <coughs> Excuse me. Bluetooth speakers. I want to talk about those because the Bluetooth headset that I mentioned before, that feeds directly into the person's ears or the hearing aid. The speakers can work also in conjunction with the person's smartphone, not only to hear music or use it as a speakerphone or anything else. But if you were to use the home automation, for example, uh, someone rings the doorbell or someone makes a noise, you can actually have it transferred into your Bluetooth speaker or extend the sound into several different rooms. So this can work in, like in the devices that I mentioned before. Doorbells, amplified ringers, speaker phones, and extension speakers. And then of course the hearing dogs. Um, alerting you that there's a sound taking place, go check it out, see what it is, and then use one of the cameras to find what, where that's coming from, and you can take care of it from that point on. So it takes a little bit of fidgeting. Um, a lot of things are pretty much, you may already have it in your home. Uh, you may already have something, <coughs> oops, excuse me. You may have something that's already available in your home that you can utilize. Uh, your um, Google Home or Echo, Alexa, some many people call it. Or even some of your, maybe you have kids in your home, they have Bluetooth speakers. You can actually utilize those speakers for whatever accessibility needs you may, you may desire. So. Telecommunications, as we mentioned before. Uh, these are some of the main ones. When it comes to video relay service, these are some of the main ones that are available for people who use the ASL. So instead of using a video phone, they could use their smartphone. And going to my phone here, I have some of these apps. I placed them on the location into communications. So you have, you see I have Storms in here. I also have, I'll use the little, uh, the Storms in. Purple Mobile, P3 Mobile, that's the uh, Purple VRS, Convo, uh, and I don't have the VRS because the, the VRS and Purple VRS are actually combining into one company, so I just kind of stayed with Purple. Uh, but all of these allow the same thing, not only for allow me to have a direct communication with another ASL user, but it also allows me to use an, an a interpreter operator who can speak for me as I use in sign language and, and to translate into ASL back to me what the other person is saying. So these are available uh, telecommunication apps that are out there. There are many others that also provide captioning um, or other uh, type of telecommunication needs. Give you a few more examples. Go back to my phone here. I have an app called Marco Polo. Also have an app called Zoom. This is for video conferencing. I have an app called Glide. That's kind of like a text message in video format. Then of course, iPhone, their own um, FaceTime app that's available. All of this allows for a face-to-face -face communication. And for a person with hearing loss, face-to-face -face communication is very important 
They may use it to be able to read lips or to use sign language or to use both or to just see the expressions or anything that's uh, important for a visual input of what the other person is saying. You also have other apps available. Some are, some are not only the text messaging, as you see on the, my bottom right hand side here with the red dot on it, but up here in my social media, there's chat apps like Facebook Messenger. Of course, you can chat with people that way. You can chat uh, like Snapchat. Instagram has their own type of texting. Twitter, social media. There's lots of different methods to use. And social media is very helpful, especially if you want to know what's happening in your neighborhood. For example, in my case, if I need to know about any emergencies that may be happening with my children's school or just need general announcements, I subscribe to the uh, school district and the school's Twitter, Twitter feeds, and I would get those messages so I know what's happening. So I don't have to rely 100% on a phone call. Um, of course, text messaging is also another backup option if your teacher is willing to use it. So these are many different apps that are available for the for the person's need for communication. So I didn't put all of the apps in there because there's so many out there and there's so many emerging new ones and unfortunately there's some that go away. Um, basically they don't become as popular as one may think or didn't meet the needs as well as the person hoped for. But some of the apps that are available, they can work like all of these things that I've listed here. Hearing aids, uh, as I mentioned before, it works with the Bluetooth devices. You can use it as a device to help hear better in a certain situation. You can also use it to equalize sound. Sometimes it's uh, nice to have that control, or the app can actually lower like high pitch noises or raise high pitch, low pitch noises. Uh, give you a good example, it's harder for me to hear a woman's voice on a telephone just because of the different tone. Uh, men's voices are a little bit easier because they tend to be deeper. But with this app, I can actually make a uh, high voice sound lower, and that makes it easier for me to understand. So that's to kind of give you an example that depends on the person's hearing loss. There's also apps that allow for visual sounds. Um, not only that it'll alert you when you have a certain device throughout the house that a sound is occurring in that room, you can also use it to see what's happening around you. You have like music identification apps. It's just nice to know if you have what music your kids are listening to. You can turn that on and it'll tell you the song. You also have apps that have different light patterns. It'll tell you, um, amazingly enough, it'll tell you where, what direction the sound coming from or how loud it is or if it's a high pitch or a low pitch sound. Different things that help you become familiar what's happening in your environment. There's also subtitles. Um, of course, as I mentioned before, turning on the caption is always helpful. It allows you to read what is being said on the video on your phone. But there's also movie apps out there where you can go to a movie theater and you download the app and you put in the necessary information the theater location and, and auditorium and what movie, and it'll show you the captions on the phone. Um, this is all new and emerg emerging type of services but it uh, gives you an idea of what's coming out and what's available. There's also apps for a sign language dictionary. If people who are looking to learn more about sign language or improve their sign language skills, there's many of them out there. Even Marley Matlin has her own sign language app. Uh, you can download it and it'll teach you different words, different concepts, different signs, and how to utilize it correctly. You also have apps out there for translate from voice to text or text to sign language. Uh, so for example, if you have a phone on the table and you're somebody who's speaking on the other end, it, the voice recognition would actually type out everything what that person is saying. Uh, of course, it's not a perfect technology, but it's something that's available, it's something that's useful. Or for example, if you're talking with somebody who uses American Sign Language, you can type out and it'll create a video. Again, not a perfect, it's not a perfect translation, but it does translate some of the words you sign, say into sign. Very helpful. You also have caption phones and TTYs. 
Uh, I, mentioned, I showed you the TTY before, but the uh, caption phones, not having a separate device, but you can actually have the captioning on your smartphone. So when you're talking to somebody on the phone, you can hold your phone back and then read everything that's being said on the screen using that same type of service with the uh, operator in the between. So that's something that's available for, available for everyone. You also have on-demand BRI services, as I told you before. Or you can actually have the smartphone, you can have the employer, or you can actually set it up yourself. Uh, this is the paid by minute service, so basically you have to have, have to have a credit card on file. So you can just automatically log in, your interpreter would pop up on the screen, the interpreter would hear through the speakerphone uh, what's being said in the room, and then sign everything that's being spoken. And then you can sign back and they can speak to the person. You can also adapt these um, smartphones to work with the Bluetooth speakers that I mentioned before, and to make it a little more of a conference type setting. It can also work with iPads or, or laptops. These are all services that are available and out there and ready to use. And of course, the home automation apps. I mentioned it before, there's so many different types out there. If you have a, a whole system at large, or you can buy individual systems like the rings that I told you about, or the light bulbs that work the different, with the different colors. They all connect to the uh, Wi-Fi, and then your phone connected to the same Wi-Fi can control all those devices. And you can set it up to any way you want it to. So doorbells, sound alerts, or any simple reoccurring noise that you know hap that will be happening and you want to be alerted when it happens. And of course, dog videos. You can use your smartphone to watch dog videos, or in, or in some people's cases, cat videos. But the reason why I put that in there is basically video communication. And again, I can't emphasize how important to have visual uh, contact for many people with hearing loss, to have that visual input, not only with being able to hear, but to be, see what is being spoken, whether it's through sign language or lip reading, or even just facial expressions. All of these are very beneficial uh, types of services for a person trying to understand what's being spoken. And of course, communication is a two-way street. So if you have someone who is using all of this technology to meet someone halfway with communication, hopefully the, the same is being reciprocated, so that they can also have the patient or use the technology as well to bridge the gap between communication. So lots of different things out there, lots of technology available. There's new stuff coming up every day. Uh, it's hard to keep up with all of them, but it's exciting. It's, it's nice to know that we can always think of something and there's a way out there for us to use it to the person advantage when it comes to hearing loss. And that's everything I wanted to share with you about this. Um, of course, there's probably tons of questions out there. What, device would work for this type of setting. I'd be happy to answer that question. We also have a electronic specialist at the Sanderson Community Center, which is the location where I work. Uh, they can actually come out and do a consultation and evaluate a site and make the recommendation based on what is being shared or being spoken and, be, and also on uh, visual inspection. What would work best for the person at their type of hearing loss. Um, Maybe technology would work fantastic for one person, but it may not for another person. So we try to find the many different solutions that work best. It may want a person be, one person may be very heavily reliant on assistive listening systems or assistive listening device, basically re, uh, utilizing what residual hearing they have left. Um, and like in my case, where I'm wearing hearing aids, I'm using Bluetooth technology. I rely a lot of it on what I can hear with type of hearing loss that I have left. And you may have another individual who does not have the uh, speech comprehension, but they have some sounds that they can hear. So they want to utilize technology to identify what those sounds are, or some who have no ability to hear sound. Hearing range and hearing loss, it had many different types of ranges and t abilities. So we try to find something that works with everyone based on their needs. So. So feel free to contact me, email me, or even text me. Uh, we're, on, we're also on Facebook. We have a Facebook messaging page. If you go to the Sanderson Community Center for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing of Utah, uh, you can find our Facebook pages, lots of announcements, uh, lots of 
information there about classes coming up, uh, deaf culture information. We also have a messaging system there. We can answer all types of questions. So thank you again for your time. I appreciate you tuning in and look forward to talking with you more later.